Hello, everyone. Welcome. We're going to be getting started with our presentation in just a minute or two. I can still see we have quite a few people in the process of signing in. We want to make sure we don't miss anybody. So if anyone would just hang tight for just another minute or so, we're going to make sure everybody can get on board, no pun intended, and then we'll go ahead and begin today's presentation. So thank you for joining. We'll go ahead and get it started in just another minute or so. Okay, folks, I can see we have just about everybody at this point. Why don't we go ahead and begin? So again, welcome for those of you just joining us. Welcome, but wanted to say how very excited I am today to be able to spend some time with each of you uh, and talk about a set of destinations and a set of trips that is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, and that is our Amtrak vacations where you're going to be traveling to the U.S. National Parks on board Amtrak. Uh, let me begin by introducing myself. My name is Andrew Channel. I'm actually the Vice President of Product here at Amtrak Vacations. Uh, and so many of these trips you're going to see are our brain children, the, the product of what we see our customers asking for, our most popular itineraries. Uh, and I have a great passion for this particular set of products. So very excited again to be able to share my expert knowledge with these with you uh, and hopefully help inspire and answer whatever questions you may have. Uh, we're definitely going to share lots of great info, but I try to also have a lot of fun too. Uh, we're basically all here to talk and to learn, to discover more about traveling, uh, about amazing destinations, and what could be more fun than that, right? So it should be fun. So let me begin uh, with a trivia question. And I'm going to talk in a moment about the little questions box on the sidebar there, and I'll give everybody a minute or two to answer my question. But I thought I'd start off with some fun trivia just to sort of get this process rolling. Uh, and for those of you who see that box, you can put your answer right to my question right in that questions box, and I'll be able to see it. So uh, since we're going to be discussing wonderful Amtrak vacations to U.S. national parks, that's where my question will be. So here we go. Which national park was the first U.S. national park created? So if you think about all the U.S. national parks, which was the first one that was officially signed into law as a U.S. national park? And for bonus credit, anybody who can tell me what year that happened in? And I can see a few excited answers popping in there. So what I'm going to do is I give everyone, I'm going to start going through a couple of things. I'm going to come back to this question in just a moment or two. So keep your answers flowing in there and I'll come back and I'll let you know who's been right and who was close, but not quite there. In the meantime, I mentioned a couple things. The questions box, which you can see indicated there on the screen, uh, that's where you're going to enter not only the answers to the question I just asked, uh, but any questions you have during the course of this process. When we get to the end, there will be a Q&A section where I'll take as many questions as I can, given the time that's left to us, uh, and endeavor to answer as many of the bits of information you're looking for as I can. For those of you who I don't get to today, because usually there's a lot of good questions on these, and if we do run out of time, I want to make sure no one is missed. For those who do, I do not get to, we will make sure to follow up with each and every one of you so you get the information uh, you were hoping to get from us. Uh, also on there, you'll see indicated at the top uh, where your free handouts are. So feel free to download those. They're there for your use, for you to keep. You can download those right from the presentation. Uh, we're happy for you to do so. While everybody's still putting some answers in there and we'll continue on, we'll talk a little bit about us. So I mentioned Amtrak Vacation. That is one of our brands here at Yankee Leisure Group. Uh, but who are we? Well, Yankee Leisure Group, we've been in business since 1972 and currently operate three major brands, Amtrak Vacations, which you're somewhat familiar with, we're presenting on this brand today. Uh, Yankee Holidays, our oldest brand, which has been around for quite some time now, and Railbookers, which offers the same type of independent rail vacation we offer in Amtrak Vacations, but for travel to Alaska, to Canada, to Europe and beyond. So international independent rail holidays in the similar spirit of what we do with Amtrak Vacations. Now, one of the amazing things about taking an Amtrak vacation to me, and looking at this map always inspires me, one of the amazing things is how many routes and destinations really are connected by the Amtrak system. I mean, virtually every state in the lower 48 and virtually every destination 
touches the Amtrak system in some way. That goes for great cities like New York, New Orleans, Chicago, San Francisco, but also the U.S. national parks and just about everything in between. And as we're going to see today, in the, in the case of the national parks, very often the Amtrak trip is the best way to get there. It's not just a nice scenic way to get there. It actually often is the best way to reach the national park. It's also important, I think, to, to go through what makes Amtrak vacations different. And in speaking with so many of our customers over the years, it always seems to come back to six really key points. But I just want to make sure I touch on these. Uh, for those of you who've been with us for a little bit and it may have traveled with us in the past, but also for those of you who are, who are new. So let me just touch on these really quickly. So the first is the bucket list experience. And I, it's funny, every year, folks, I'm out there, I travel the rails, I'm out on our trips, I get a chance to meet so many customers like yourselves and hear about your travel and your experiences and your passion for what we're doing. And I keep always coming back to the same point year after year. And there's so many people tell us the reason they wanted an Amtrak vacations trip was not just about the great destinations, right? It's not just about those cities or the coast or the national parks or, or wherever they're going to. It's because the journey by train is actually, actually part of the bucket list for them. That classy experience, whether it's sleeping on board and a sleeping accommodation or enjoying dining in the classic dining car, uh, what, or just a, that older form of transportation, that more relaxed and sit back and enjoy the trip kind of a form of travel. No matter who I talk to, this always comes up as part of it. They really wanted to enjoy the train trip. And it, and it makes sense to me because I sometimes, I sometimes joke and I'll say, you know, one of the things you never hear from somebody who gets back from a vacation, at least I've never heard this, is somebody get off, come back home and tell you about the trip and say, I just had the most amazing flight, right? You never, you very rarely hear that. If, if never, I've never heard it personally. You've, it's very different when someone gets back off the train. And really, a, a vacation like this is designed for somebody who understands that getting to and from the trip should be a part of the trip and not just an unpleasant and incidental necessity to get to the vacation. For with us, the vacation is the bucket list experience from the moment you set foot on the train to the moment you return back. Freedom and flexibility. Our trips are independent, which means you have the best of all worlds. You have our expert team of consultants who know the rail, the destinations, all the aspects to make for a perfect vacation and help you plan, take care of all the logistics and set you up and support you during the course of your trip. Uh, and yet at the same time, there is no tour manager directing your every movement minute to minute. There is no group you're tied to, whether you get along with them or not. There's not 40 other strangers you're forced into a crowd with and you now have to follow their agenda. Or in this day and age, you know, to be quite honest with you, a lot of people in the current atmosphere, you know, don't want to be traveling in big groups. And the beauty of traveling with us is not only the freedom and flexibility to go at your own pace, but to go with just whoever you want to travel with. If it's just you and a partner, you and your family, or you by yourself. Honestly, you decide that. We give you the, the benefit of our expertise in planning and all the organization, but leave you the freedom and flexibility to explore the trip at your own pace the way you want to, without any direction, any group of strangers, anything like that. Castle free. It's an important one. Anybody who's been through an airport in the last you know, 20 years has probably realized it's, it takes a lot of effort now to get through an airport experience. Me, I'm that, I'm that uh, planner, that paranoid traveler who always expects the worst to happen. I tend to get to the airport two to three hours early at a minimum just because I'm expecting long security lines and baggage checks and all that goes with it. Uh, and it's very different when you take an Amtrak vacations trip. And I've been privileged to take a number all across the United States. And I will tell you the fact that you just you roll on in, in the case of sleeping compartment passengers, and we'll come back to, to private rooms later on in the discussion. The fact that you have your own separate boarding from everyone else, it's very easy. Uh, luggage allowances, which we'll come back to, are very relaxed. The fact that there's so little hassle. I mean, you just you wander up, they check who you are, you go on with ease. There's not a lengthy check in or any other uh, process like that it means it's a, a really hassle free way to begin and end your, your vacation and all throughout. It is worth mentioning that we are the official tour operator for Amtrak. We are the one and only partner uh, officially designated to offer vacations. So for those coming to Amtrak and looking for a vacation, as opposed to just business and computer travel, uh, we are the partner who basically takes that wonderful train transportation element and builds and crafts that whole vacation experience around the train. City to city service. Very often, almost in every case, in fact, when you take an Amtrak trip and you get off at each destination, you're getting off in the heart of that destination. This isn't getting off at an airport that's 45 minutes to an hour and a half outside the heart of the city and trying to figure out how to tote your luggage into the place you're actually trying to get to because it's funny how the airports themselves are very rarely actually in the city. They're usually significantly outside of it. 
Typically, you're getting off either within walking distance or a very short cab ride to your hotels, to your sightseeing, to all that we have planned for you. Makes for a very convenient and relaxed experience. And the last thing is something for everyone. Whether it's great cities, whether it's wide open landscapes, whether it's arts, culture, culinary experiences, it does not matter what you're looking for. We have such a selection, such a variety of vacations to offer you by train. And the fact that we're able to adjust and combine and customize to make those truly fit your personal tastes means that there always is something for everyone else out there. Whatever you're looking for in terms of a destination, in terms of a travel experience, we have something that fits you, which I'm very proud of. Now, while we're talking about some of the things that we're proud of, flexible booking is something that we also love to be able to point out to our customers in the current environment. Let's be honest, there's lots of questions about people saying like, hey, I wanna travel, I'm looking at late summer, I'm looking at the fall, I'm looking at next year. I think we've all seen a lot in the past few months how much things can change and the unexpected could come up to interfere with your travel plans. And we wanna make sure we account for that for you. Uh, so we're very proud to be able to offer the best assurance possible. You can book your trip with confidence and know that whatever changes come up, uh, the full value of your trip is covered and that's covered by our maximum flexibility offer and essentially what it means is any new and in this case actually existing reservations for those of you who are planning another trip uh, you can change your travel dates or cancel your rail journey up to five days prior to departure with no penalties no cancellation fees no change surcharges nothing full value of your trip is protected you can change your dates with confidence you can change your whole trip with confidence if you started off going to new orleans and now you want to go to the grand canyon it's not a problem uh, it basically allows our customers to know that no matter what is going to happen out there, we're out there to look out for them and make sure that they don't lose their vacation. We can make it very, very easy on everybody. So we're very proud to be able to offer that to you. Another point, it wasn't on my six, but if there was a seven or a point that sort of underwrites many of the other ones I just touched on, and I did allude to a little bit, and that is customization is a major part, a major pro of working with Amtrak Vacations. And the clients who travel with us don't only just love the convenience of having someone plan and take care of arrangements and you know, with that expert hands, and the expert knowledge of the train and hotels and sightseeing and so forth, but they also appreciate that because this is an independent trip, we can truly, truly make it their own. So not only are you not tied to a group as we talked about, it, 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 basically it also means that we can take popular itineraries and adjust them in every way to make sure the vacation is perfectly suited to your particular taste. Uh, one of the most important is our ability to make a trip depart from your hometown. So we're gonna see a number of trips out there today uh, and you, we're gonna see some starting points, places like Chicago, Denver. But you also saw the map I showed earlier which shows how extensive the Amtrak system is across the United States. Well folks, the, the reality is there's over 500 different stops on the Amtrak system. And while we may suggest or show you some of the most popular, it is important to note that wherever on that Amtrak system you are, whatever is your local station, wherever you want to begin, we can adjust the trip to start, and in, in other cases start and end, in whatever point on that system you want it to be. So very important to remember that customization, is not just changing the trip, it's actually changing where it starts and ends. While we're on that subject, it's not just the rail connections, folks, of course. Uh, we can tailor every aspect of the trip to your specific wishes. Uh, if you want to stay longer in a popular destination, if you want to add extra destinations together, which is very common, you want to upgrade your hotels or add extra sightseeing, uh, you name it. Basically, our team is here to make each trip a perfect match for each traveler. So we're not expecting everybody to fit the exact same mold. We know what's popular. We know what most want to do, but we also have the ability with your travel experts sitting, you know, to sit there to assist you uh, to basically make sure that they make adjustments. So now that you know a little bit more about us and what we're going to do for each of you, um, you get a sense of what's possible. And we're going to begin in a moment by going through a few of our most loved national parks vacations, some of the most popular, all customizable, but these are some of the best. Before I do that, I want to come back to my trivia question and thank all of you for playing along. I can see a number of answers that came through there. Um, and I'm very, very glad that we're able to do that. So let me go ahead and take a look. Okay. So I see just one guess is correct. Um, the first officially designated national park is Yellowstone National Park. Uh, so a lot of good answers in there. Some like but he definitely were approved uh, and protected land prior to that, but the first officially 
designated national park sign into law as such was Yellowstone. And those of you looking for bonus, and I did see one correct answer out there, 1870, that's correct. Ulysses S. Grant, President Grant, uh, did sign that bill into law creating Yellowstone as the first U.S. national park. Okay, so let's continue on. Let's continue on, and thank you all. So one of the first trips I want to touch on is Rails to the Grand Canyon. And I have to say, the Grand Canyon tops many, many bucket lists for many, many customers, and for good reason. Uh, in terms of the sheer magnitude, the geological beauty, uh, but also the wildlife and cultural experience you can find there, it's unparalleled. It has so much to offer. Uh, it's also, incidentally, a perfect fit for those vacationing by train. In fact, a number of the elements included in your vacation to the Grand Canyon are actually built around classic train journeys and train routes. So it really is a destination made by and for train travelers. Um, our Rails to the Grand Canyon, the package that we're going to look at right now, is one of the most popular trips the customers book with us to get there. One of our shorter ones, but straight, and it's an excellent time right at the Grand Canyon itself. You begin by traveling overnight from Los Angeles on the Southwest Chief. So you board the train in LA, get on, travel overnight. Uh, you wake up the next morning, traveling through some serene desert countryside before you get to Williams, Arizona. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with Williams, Arizona, it's a hidden gem. It's this classic little Route 66 town uh, right there as you head up to the Grand Canyon. It's also, and it call, it's well known as such, the gateway to the Grand Canyon. Uh, and the reason for that is, is when you get off in Williams, we're going to have an included breakfast for you there so you can grab some food, freshen up. And you're changing trains to another experience called the Grand Canyon Railway. It's more like a classic Southwest train type journey. Uh, you board the train, you travel a short way through this sprawling expanse of Ponderosa Pine Forest, uh, past winding scrubby creeks and some other photo worthy scenery before getting dropped at the South Rim. Uh, the train journey itself has a number of different classes which our experts will be happy to take you through everything from standard right up through first class with extra uh, food and amenities and live music right on up through luxury dome and parlor classes that are something out of that more bygone age of rail travel that that traditional rail experience we all see in our mind's eye when we think of traveling by train through Arizona. But as I mentioned, that train journey takes you up through a little short scenic uh, train ride itself right up to the south rim of the canyon. I mean right to the south rim of the canyon, folks. Uh, when you get there, you get off the Grand Canyon Railway, uh, your hotel, your luggage is whisked off to your hotel, so they take care of that for you. They bring it right over to where you're going to be checking in uh, while you begin sightseeing. Your sightseeing tour, which is included, picks you up right there at the station right at the south rim. So you disembark. Very easy and effortless, you get off, they're waiting for you, they take care of the luggage, you board, uh, and they bring you all around the south rim of the Grand Canyon. Could not be more convenient. And the guide who hosts you is fantastic. They're experts, uh, they're gonna take you not only for some great views, like you're definitely gonna get that. Uh, some great views and vantage points, plenty of opportunity for wonderful photos. I have a few myself that I'm still very proud of taking because I'm not naturally a great photographer. Uh, but I have to say the Grand Canyon makes it easy for you. You just almost point and click and you get something magnificent. Uh, the guide not only takes you to those, but they give you a lot of expert and insider knowledge on not only the geology and formation of the Canyon, but also on local wildlife, um, the native cultures of the people of this area. So you get quite a bit of insight into the whole Grand Canyon experience, not just great photos. And when they're done, they bring you right back to the south rim where your hotel is. So Again, the convenience of this is amazing. From the point you step foot on the train to LA, we take you right to what you want to do. Getting off in Williams, boarding this classic train experience, picking you right up there for your sightseeing and returning you back exactly where you want to be, perched right at the south rim of the Grand Canyon. Now afterwards, after you've had that first day experience, you're actually there for two nights on this itinerary. The second day is a free day, which I actually take as a great opportunity to finish exploring and fill in some more information on the canyon. My personal recommendation, and I've done the Grand Canyon a few times now, if you're an early riser or if you can be, and if you're not, you should consider being one for this trip, try to get up before sunrise and go down and watch it happen over the Grand Canyon. Talk about spectacular and unforgettable experiences. This one is up there, folks. And if you catch the morning right, watching the clouds form in inside the Grand Canyon itself in the morning uh, before the sun comes up and, and burns that off and exposes all that color and beautiful geology, absolutely something not to be missed. So that's my personal recommendation for you. Put, a, put, put it on the alarm. I know it's vacation, but bear with me. <laughs> the views are definitely worth it. I recommend you do that. 
And then, of course, afterwards, you have plenty of t free time to go for a stroll, check, check out the Grand Canyon Village, some of the historical buildings and other attractions in the area, lots to see and do. Or if you just want to relax, sit by the edge with a camera in hand or just soak in the views in the fresh air, you can certainly do that, too. After your two night stay at the South Rim, you get returned back to Williams where you meet Amtrak to continue your journey on back to the West Coast or points beyond. Because, again, it's all about where you're coming from. Basically, Rails to the Grand Canyon allows you to explore up close and in depth the greatest and most breathtaking canyon in the world. And I've seen quite a few. Impossible to beat, in my honest opinion. Now, for anyone looking for a thorough national parks vacation and exploration, you could not do better than Grand National Parks with Yellowstone, Yosemite, and the Grand Canyon. I designed this itinerary myself based on exactly what our customers were looking to do. And I will tell you, it's consistently popular to this very day. Here we're basically combining three fantastic rail, rail journeys with three amazing national parks. So let me talk you through that experience a little bit. So leaving out of Chicago, you're gonna board the California Zephyr. I've traveled trains all over North America and all over the world, folks, and I will tell you, there is no better train journey, no more amazing landscape scenery than you will find on the California Zephyr. Un peerless, in my honest opinion. And the reason for that is between, if you do the whole length of it, as you do on this trip we're looking at, from Chicago all the way out to San Francisco, during the course of that trip, you literally see every type of scenery you have to offer in North America. So heading out initially, it's traveling across the Great Plains and Big Sky Country. When you wake up after your first night aboard the train, as you're approaching Denver, you're heading into the Rocky Mountains. And there's nothing more magnificent than a train journey through the mountains. You wind right through the heart of the Rockies as you enter Colorado, as you pass Denver, rather. And as the Rockies give way to the Canyon Country, Western Colorado, it's a different type of scenery, but just as amazing with the train winding through some of these little canyons and through this really spectacular scenery. After leaving Canyon Country, Western Colorado, as it travels through Utah and Nevada, the train's going right through some desert scenery. Uh, breakfast in Nevada with the sun coming up outside the train from the dining car, I have to tell you, definitely one of my top travel experiences, highly recommended. And then the last phase has you tra traveling high into the Sierra Nevada mountains in California through some white snowy mountain passes. And just as you come to the top of Sierras and begin your descent, the landscape transformed and it's nothing but orange trees and sunshine uh, and on into San Francisco. So epic, beautiful train journey. It's the starting point of this trip. So as I mentioned, the bucket list experience, folks, isn't just the destination, it's the journey to get there. But I digress. So let's go back to the trip we had begun talking about. So you travel out, you travel one night over, you go through the Rocky Mountains, and you stop for a brief stay in Salt Lake City. And that's really just a jumping off point to get you up to your first national park, which is Yellowstone. Yellowstone, of course, is world famous for a number of different things, and I think you'd be hard pressed to find a national park with more variety to offer. If it's wildlife you're looking for, Yellowstone is the best. There are no larger collection, none in the world, a larger collection of geysers, uh, hot pools, and other geothermal effects. None to be found anywhere in greater abundance than Yellowstone National Park. And let's not forget things like the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone and some of the other craggy peaks and valleys and canyons. It's a spectacular piece of territory and definitely well worth visiting. So you get off in Salt Lake City, one night stay there. We bring you up for a two night stay in Yellowstone. You don't have to figure out how to do this on your own folks. Not only do we hand deliver you up to Yellowstone, but our guide will pick you up right from your hotel. They'll bring you for a full day exploration around Yellowstone National Park. So all those amazing landmarks like Old Faithful and the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone, all the things you want to see, they're there to make sure you have not only the experience of getting there, but also their expert knowledge and insights into the park itself. Uh, wildlife are abundant. Traffic jams by bison are very common experience. Uh, ring, but whether it's those or, or ringhorn deer, or if you're very lucky, wolves, wildlife is other one, also one of the major attractions for why people go to Yellowstone, not just the landscape. So after two nights of exploring Yellowstone, we're going to transfer you back to Salt Lake City. You'll have one more evening there, and I, we include there on your stay a really uh, a great insider tip. It's actually included in the itinerary for you folks, and that is dinner at the Roof Restaurant. Uh, Salt Lake City has some beautiful surrounding areas, but the dinner experience actually overlooks the heart of Temple Square and the Mormon Tabernacle. Some amazing food, really great dining experience, and spectacular views of the heart of the city. 
After that evening, you reboard the train and head west, traveling overnight one more time as you head on into California. And I told you, you get that great experience of traveling across the desert and through the Sierra Nevada mountains before reaching San Francisco. You'll have some time to explore this wonderful city by the bay itself. It's also the jumping off point for your tour to Yosemite National Park. So our guides pick you up from your hotels in San Francisco after you've had a little time to visit Fisherman's Wharf and some of the other popular attractions in San Fran. And they take you out to Yosemite National Park. Now, this one's always near and dear to my heart. It wasn't the first national park I had visited. It was the second. Uh, I had done Grand Canyon the first time, but I have to tell you, Yosemite is definitely special and for reasons. It's been protected for a very long time. Some amazing rock features and mountains, things like Half Dome uh, and El Capitan, which are very famous, but that's just the start of them. A number of spectacular waterfalls. Uh, I have this one photo I love to show people when they ask me what some of my favorite travel moments were standing under uh, the falls at Yosemite when it had been a particularly heavy uh, time for the falls. It's just this gushing, beautiful, uh, white, frothy waterfall, like the absolute picture postcard experience of what you want a waterfall to be. Uh, and you can do this very mild like level hike right up to the foot of it. Absolutely amazing, folks. Definitely one of my top travel moments. Um, you have time. You have a guide who brings you there. Of course, they show you everything the park has to offer, along with giving you free time to explore a little bit at your own pace. If you're like me, take that short walk to the foot of the falls. It's definitely it, That's for sure. They return you back to San Francisco to finish up your time there, and then you continue on, having done your first two national parks and now on your way to your third. I also mentioned it wasn't just three national parks, it was three making train rides. The second one, the Coast Starlight, very different than what we just saw with the California Zephyr. Just worth mentioning, traveling south in the California Zephyr gives you two completely different views, but it does not matter which side of the train you're on. My recommendation is find a good spot and enjoy both because on one side you have the rolling hills of California, and the other side for most of the journey you have the Pacific Ocean. So take your pick, it's beautiful either way. You're gonna stop in Los Angeles for one night. You have some included sightseeing there. You're really just stopping for one evening for a quick exploration, but go check out the Walk of Fame and the Chinese Theater and some of the other popular Hollywood attractions or stop by Santa Monica Pier. It depends what you're looking for. And then that evening, after you've had some time to explore Los Angeles, you continue on to the Grand Canyon. We've described a little bit of that journey from Los Angeles over the canyon before. With this particular itinerary, it's very much the same. The overnight trip on board the Southwest Chief, the Grand Canyon Railway up to the South Rim, and the sightseeing tour, all those wonderful things we were able to describe and share with you. Uh, where it's a little bit different is on your return journey back from the majesty of the canyon. And you get back to Williams, you actually stop there for one night, which I actually very much enjoy because, again, the town itself is charming and a little out of time to be able to explore and see what it has to offer. It's definitely worth it, whether it's you know, visiting one of the little diners or the shops with kitschy Americana or what have you. Just exploring that little Route 66 town experience is a lot of fun. Uh, you'll stay there one night and the next morning board the train to head on back towards Chicago. As I mentioned, if you're looking to get more out of your trip, experience more national parks, this is absolutely one of my favorites. One of those we're most proud of. One of those our customers tell us every year. This one included is a great way to experience the national parks. Now, if you want to explore multiple national parks, but maybe not quite as extensive as that Grand National Parks itinerary, I would personally recommend to you Grand Tetons and Yellowstone Rail Journey, where basically you're taking in two amazing experiences. You get that scenic train journey on the California Zephyr that I've been speaking about so highly, uh, but also two spectacular national parks with Grand Tetons National Park, which we haven't touched on yet, and Yellowstone National Park, along with the charming little town of Jackson Hole. So you begin with that departure on the California Zephyr, doing that cross-country journey and through the Rockies and through Canyon Country, uh, and stopping in Salt Lake City for one night. We have included for you a rental car, hired car there for you to be able to board and have the flexibility to head on out when you're ready uh, and travel north across this countryside up onto Grand Tetons National Park. The nice thing about this is it's not just the national parks. The town of Jackson Hole itself is actually a wonderful spot to visit and explore. This charming little town, mountain town, lots to see and do there. And it's also a great point for jumping off and visiting Grand Tetons itself. Uh, we include for you the sightseeing to do that. So you head on up, check in, explore the town a little bit. Uh, the next morning, your guide will meet you, bring you right into Grand Tetons National Park for wildlife viewing, 
and an expert journey through the landscape itself, which is a great compliment to Yellowstone. Now it is worth pointing out, this is a, actually a great way to illustrate something I mentioned earlier. And if you remember before, I, I talked about customization and how much flexibility there really is there for extra nights or extra sightseeing and all the different possibilities. Grand Tetons is actually one of those places we do see people take advantage of that opportunity pretty regularly. Um, so it's a good example of what I was talking about in the sense that one customization that's very common is for people to add an extra night and extra sightseeing to get more out of the visit to Grand Tetons. Uh, and something like that might be, for example, the extra night in our very popular, uh, there's a gentle float tour that goes right down through one of the rivers in the heart of Grand Tetons National Parks for sightseeing by water. So just a beautiful tranquil ride right through the heart of this beloved national park. Uh, the extra night is worth it for many customers. So if that's something you're interested in, that's something our consultants will be able to assist you with doing. Just one example of what I was talking about before. Uh, but after exploring Grand Tetons, whether it's the one night we recommend or whether you do add more time there to explore further, uh, you'll continue up to Yellowstone National Park and in this itinerary, uh, driving yourself right into the heart. It's important to mention that you'll actually be staying within the National Park itself, which is very unique. Not a lot of people are able to offer that in a vacation like this. You're staying inside the heart of the National Park. Um, and also included in this itinerary, you're staying there for two nights. Also included in this itinerary is the oldest and most popular and most famous tour of Yellowstone National Park, and that is the Circle of Fire. It's been around for a very long time. Uh, the guides, again, are gonna take you to all the best loved attractions and spots in Yellowstone National Park and some of those expert ones that not many will know, uh, but give you the best and fullest experience of Yellowstone while you're there. After visiting Yellowstone and taking in and taking some great photos and enjoying the wildlife and the scenery that we've been talking about, you'll return back to Salt Lake City. Also in this itinerary, we do include that dinner at the Rufi rest, uh, restaurant I mentioned with that amazing view over Temple Square. Hard to beat and a great way to wrap up this spectacular rail journey, this rail vacation across America. Again, if it's a week-long trip you're looking for and you're looking to take in a couple of spectacular national parks and at least one beautiful train journey, this is a great place to start. It is worth mentioning a couple other itineraries I wanted to talk about because they are both popular destinations in themselves, but also highlight the fact that we, you know, we can go any, from anywhere to anywhere in the system. So let me talk about Glacier National Park getaway a little bit. Every single year, Glacier National Park ranks among the top one or two most popular destinations that we offer around the United States. And with good reason, the soaring mountains, the forests, the wildlife, it's an absolutely pristine wilderness. Everybody should visit at least once in their lifetime. This particular trip, is more of a one shot, one national park, great immersive experience in one key destination with a three night stay, a beautiful sightseeing tour through the heart of the national park that takes you down going to the Sun Road, this winding uh, cliffside mountainside road that runs right through the heart of Glacier, uh, a sightseeing boat cruise down to Medicine Lake right in the heart of the park. But it also can come from anywhere folks, whether you're leaving out of Chicago or Seattle or New York, Washington DC, Los Angeles, you name it, this trip can be customized to suit any departure point in the Amtrak system. Uh, it can be done round trip, it can be done one way. The, co the possibilities are endless. But I have to tell you, if you haven't considered Glacier or if you're thinking about Glacier now, it is definitely not to be missed when you get out to the national parks. Beautiful destination, highly popular every single year. And this next one, Glenwood Springs, not officially a national park. So not a national park per se, but for those looking at national parks, uh, and who can appreciate the, the beautiful landscapes and the scenery that we're all looking for on a national parks type trip. While it doesn't carry the official stamp of being a national park, it is very often, I will tell you, combined with national parks, such as Yellowstone and Grand Tetons, um, or as a standalone destination for those who've done the parks but want something beautiful and outdoorsy, um, even if it doesn't quite fit that name. So Glenwood Springs is a wonderful destination to explore, whether it's standalone or combined with other trips. Whether you're leaving from Denver or again, any of the other 500 plus stops in the Amtrak system, I highly recommend a visit. One thing I also wanted to touch on, we viewed a number of trips today. It is worth mentioning, this is just a sampling of what we do when it comes to national parks. We're run through itineraries to not only these big ones we mentioned like Glacier and Yellowstone and Yosemite and the Grand Canyon, but to a whole host of destinations, whether it's visits to Arches National Park, Canyonlands, Bryce Canyon, Zion, Mount Rainier, you name it, national parks are very much a popular destinations, and we have such a wide selection of ways to get there. I do encourage you when you're done to uh, pick up the phone, speak with one of our consultants about what you're interested in. 
uh, and definitely visit our website and explore some of the options that are near and dear to you. Now, we also spoke a couple of times about what each package includes, right? We just ran through a number of itineraries, which are always inclusive of the train and hotels and sightseeing and sometimes key admissions and dining options like the roof, which we talked about. Um, but there's a lot of flexibility even within there. We don't just use one hotel selection. This isn't a group trip, so you're not all staying at the same hotel. Whether it's a three-star hotel you're looking for or a four-star experience or a luxury five-star, we have a wide range of options, and it really comes down to what uh, price you're looking for and what suits your taste, but we do have a lot of options in that regard. And one point I touched on lightly, I also want to remind you for, for some of these journeys, because some of them are relatively short in the range of three nights, four nights, others can range up to two weeks, as we saw with Grand National Parks. So there's a lot of questions often come up on packing, and I am very happy to be able to tell you that Amtrak is as generous as it gets when it comes to luggage allowances. Every traveler is allowed two free carry-ons and two free checked bags. Uh, Get there 45 minutes before. Uh, you can start checking in bags for the longer journeys. They'll meet you on the other side. You can bring your carry-ons to your private room, your coach seat, wherever you're going to be staying. But definitely not to be worried whether it's a, not to worry about if it's a short trip or a long trip. Either way, you're going to have plenty of opportunity to bring what you need for the length of the journey. The other thing everyone wants to know about, and I'm going to spend a little time on it here before we, we come to the end, folks, and that is the different types of accommodations on board the train. I find this comes up all the time with people who would like to know, well, I'm going to stay on board, but what is that like? You know, what is the experience like of staying on, on the train? They're also curious to know, particularly in this day and age, like, hey, with concerns about health or, or corona or travel in general, you know, am I crammed in tightly? Is this an airplane situation where I'm elbow to elbow with complete strangers or... Do I have a little space? Do I have a, a, a clean, safe environment to travel in? Do I have my own privacy if that's what I want? So I think you'll be very pleased by what I'm gonna share here with Amtrak, because not only, of course, is the train clean and beautifully maintained and safe and healthy, it's also one of the most uh, spacious, uh, relaxed and comfortable ways to travel. And you're definitely not crammed in uh, in any way, shape or form. So let's start with the first type of accommodation, which is in fact the way most people travel on board. And that is the coach seating, which you see featured there. And this photo does a great job of really illustrating all the points of why coach is such a great form, uh, accommodation and form of travel when it comes to Amtrak. And I will tell you from firsthand experience, I've done all three types of accommodations overnight that we're about to talk about on the train. All three have their, their pros for sure. With the coach accommodation, the nice thing is there is no middle seat. I don't know if you noticed that when you first look, but Amtrak seating is always two by two, which means you and whoever you're traveling with or sometimes just you by yourself or no one at all, there's never a middle seat. You're never crammed in between the complete strangers. You either have a window or you have an aisle or you have the whole row to yourself. That's not a science. You can get up and move and choose a seat or a space you feel comfortable. There's great window views right from your seat. Plenty of places to store luggage, whether it's check bags, as we mentioned, or the overhead storage for carry-ons that you see featured there. And lastly, room to roam. You're not confined to your seats. It's not an airplane, folks, with a it's a little sign up telling you, please don't unbuckle. You want to get up and go down to find a quiet spot on the train in the observation car or a little booth to yourself over at the, uh, the, the snack car to get some food. Honestly, uh, you have a lot of flexibility in that regard. So coach is a very, very comfortable way to travel. Even when it comes to sleeping, the chair is made to lie back about 45 degrees with a leg rest that kicks up so you can stretch out fully. And you can see from the picture there how much room there really is in coach seating. So very, very comfortable way to travel. And as I mentioned, the most common way. For those interested in the private accommodation, there are two that we're going to touch on today, the most common. The first of which, the first upgraded room, is called the roomette. Now, what is a roomette? Well, during the day, it's a pair of seats facing each other with a little table that can fold out, great viewing window. Um, at night, the car attendant will come and turn down the upper and lower beds for sleeping, so it converts to your private sleeping apartment. You can close the door, latch it, make it a private space. Uh, the roomette passengers also have strictly in their car for their use private shower and bathroom facility that's only uh, for the use of roomette passengers. And also important to note, you have included when you're traveling in roomette the price of meals in your ticket. And that can be going down to the dining car if that's something you'd like to do, experience the views and the social aspect of dining there. Or if you prefer your privacy and you like the idea of not traveling with all that crowd, well, no problem. You can stay in your room. Part of the deal is that the car attendant will also deliver meals to your room. So if you'd rather take your meals in the privacy of your own compartment, that's certainly a possibility too. 
The next level of private accommodation is called the bedroom or sometimes called the deluxe bedroom. Uh, very similar to the roomette in the sense that it is made for two people. There's the great window view, there's the fold out table. Um, there's seating there, although you see one of them is more akin to a bench seat. Uh, and also similar to the roomette at night, the car attendant will make come and make up the upper and lower beds for sleeping. Where they differ from each other slightly is the roomette uses that private but shared bathroom facility strictly in their car for the use of the roomette passengers in their car. The deluxe bedroom has a uh, small, very small shower and bathroom facility specifically in their room. That's the big point of differentiation between the two. I have to tell you, if you have not dined on board a train, this is also typically one of those things that most surprises and excites people once they've had a chance to travel on board. The food quality is amazing, folks. Uh, you're eating chef prepared meals. You're having a steak dinner. I mentioned breakfast on the train and watching the sunrise. Have an omelet, have a stack of pancakes. There's not only great quality food, there's a variety of it. Uh, and even seasonally, they mix up and have special offerings that are a little bit different based on the time of the year. Uh, the dining car on Amtrak and the food quality is definitely more like a rolling restaurant than uh, anything you will have seen in an airplane. This is not microwaved airplane food, folks. This is good quality meals. Most times I speak with customers, they get off and they say they have to get off the train because they've been enjoying the dining too much and need to get a little exercise in and work off some of the fine food. So uh, definitely you'll appreciate the quality of meals on board. I know I do. And I did want to circle back now that we're kind of nearing the end and nearing that questions and answer period. I'm looking forward to going through some of the things that you wanted to hear, folks. But now that we're getting to that point, I did want to circle back to a couple important things worth mentioning. One of those is our flexible booking offers. So we've looked at a number of vacations today, some really popular ones. We've talked about the ability to not only review others, but also make adjustments and customizations to make each trip fit you personally. But it isn't worth revisiting again the fact that no matter what you book, anything booked by May 31st of this year for travel at any point, if you do have a situation where you need to change your plans, where you do have to revisit or cancel your trip, it's important to remember that we basically take care of that, that risk and that worry for you. No matter what happens, if you have to change, full value of your trip is carried forward to any new trip you want to book, regardless of when that is or what that is. It does not have to be the same itinerary whatsoever. You will definitely get your vacation. If you decide that major city is not for you, now you want to do a national park, that is not a problem, folks, for us. We'll make that happen for you. Even now, there are also some everyday discounts running. So if you are a child, you know, have children traveling with you age two to 12, or if you are a senior traveler, 65 or older, or active duty military personnel, when you call in and you speak with your consultant and they're helping you with your trip and getting everything set for you, be sure to mention this because you would qualify for those. And for those looking at upgrades on their sleeping accommodation. So if you are thinking of going from a coach to a room at or a bedroom seating, anyone booked by May 5th, and I would, encourage you to jot down that code right there in front of you, that Nat Parks 100. You provide that to your consultant, they'll make sure you get the extra $100 off uh, your booking for any upgrade. Just as a reminder, I did talk about the handouts earlier, but wanted to show one more time where you can access those. If you want the information from today's presentation, be sure to click on and download the onboard accommodations or customization information, those little handouts there on the right. If you haven't already, and I know many of you have, be sure any questions you'd like myself to address with the time I have remaining or for us to follow up with you on, make sure those go into the little box there on the side because I want to make sure I get to as much information as possible for each and every one of you. I see a number of good questions in there right now. So again, I'm going to get to as many as I possibly can. If for some reason I do not get to all of yours, and I apologize, I won't get to all of them today, we will definitely be following up to make sure all the information is provided to you folks. So let me go ahead and pick a few of these out here. I think I have time for probably three or four. Let me just do a quick scan. Okay, this is a good one. So Sarah asked, can I combine different types of trips? I'm looking at a couple of different ones on your website. Uh, great, very, very good question. The answer is yes. So I, when we talk about customizing, it's not just about taking one itinerary and making tweaks or, or add-ons to that. You can definitely combine a couple of different ones. In fact, that's not uncommon. Like a I had mentioned Glenwood Springs is not only popular for people looking for a national parks type trip, um, it's often tacked on to something else. So people who are going to Grand Tetons and Yellowstone, for example, will often stop at a Glenwood Springs. Those trips can be combined together um, or cities plus national park. It honestly doesn't matter. So if you're online or you're talking to a consultant and you're between a couple of trips or you really like aspects of both, certainly it's not just that we can adjust one itinerary. We can definitely put a couple of them together if that's what suits you. So great question, Sarah. Thank you for asking. 
Uh, TJ wanted to know, are these all your national park trips? Okay. Um, no, for sure they are, they are not. We talked about sort of the, the big four, the ones that come up all the time uh, or that most people might, might, might you know, would be most commonly asking about, which is Grand Canyon, uh, Yellowstone, uh, Yosemite, and then Glacier National Park. But what we've seen this year and, and in recent years is the demand and the interest in all sorts of national parks um, means that we're able to offer and to provide the customers what they're looking for. And that is not just um, that one big trip, but also some of the other national parks, places like Zion. And I, I mentioned a little bit of this before, so apologies for bringing it up again, but it was a good question. Um, we offer arches, Canyonlands, uh, you, you name it, Zion and Bryce and Mount Rainier and Olympic National Park. You know, we offer national park options either as single destinations and in various combinations, two, three, sometimes as much as five or six national parks in a single trip, depending on what you're really looking for. So something for everyone, as we touched on before. But thank you for the question, TJ. When is the best time to go? So Bobby was asking when the best time to go on a trip was. Um, with national parks, it's actually a nice one to ask because depending on the national parks, some are open year round and some are not. So Glacier National Park, for example, is only open from the end of June, really only open from the end of June through early September. That's when everybody goes. So there is sort of that season you have to go. Uh, and one thing worth mentioning with that is, depending on when your trip comes, that's one of those because it's such a short season. Um, definitely dates fill up you know, pretty quickly. Even now, we're pretty, you know, people are traveling a little bit less and all that. Like even through parts of 2020 and into 2021, we're still seeing that just because it's such a short season. Uh, for others, it really depends on what you're looking for. Yellowstone, for example, um, we often find that people who've been during the summer will come back for a second trip and go in winter because it's a very different experience than what they had the first time. Um, so it really depends. Are you looking for the best weather? Are you looking for something a little bit different? Um, are you looking to be there when wildlife migrates? Our experts are basically there to help with those questions and help sort out what the best fit is for you. It may even be what's the most affordable time to go, which we can also point out to you. But great question. Thanks, Bobby. Uh, I'm going to do, folks, I, I apologize, I have time for one more question, and then I promise we will follow up with everybody to make sure you get everything you're looking for. But Kyle had a good one I wanted to make sure I touched on. I just saw this one pop up, and he's not the only one. There's three others that asked this question. So, Kyle, you were the first. I'm going to make sure to answer this for you. Um, do I have to pay in full? Great question. No, we have a deposit set up where you basically, depending on the trip, you pay a small amount up front, whether it's 100 per person, $100 per person, $250 per person, that's the range. Um, and basically that secures your spot, your room, your pricing, all that sort of thing. And then the full payment is due uh, 60 days, in most cases, prior to departure. So no, a, a small deposit will secure the space for you, Kyle, and, and thank you for the others who also asked that question. Uh, but that's all it takes, that's a good one. Well, folks, before I wrap up, I wanna ask you one last important question. And you've seen a lot of what we have to offer and you've heard me mention so many other destinations that are possibilities. And I'm always the most interested to find out, you know, what you're thinking about. Where are you looking to go? Having seen and heard what I've been able to share today or for those who have visited our website or even for those who have just been looking into national parks in general and hoping to see if we can fulfill that dream for you. You know, what rail vacations are you interested in? Even if it's not a national park, if you're like I am, when one vacation ends or shortly before, I'm already planning the next one. So in some cases, a couple at a time. Um, but I'm always curious. So I'd love to, if you could for me, type in a little box, let me know what you're thinking. Dream vacations, national parks you're, you're interested in, or just other great destinations. I'm always very curious to hear from each and every one of my attendees what it is they're thinking and what they're dreaming about uh, for their future travel plans. So that questions box, go ahead and chat them right in. I'd love to hear from everybody, folks. And with that, sadly, it does bring us to the end of our presentation today. So I do hope that I've been able to shed some light, to share some important information, to inspire you. Uh, on some trips that definitely motivate and inspire and excite me and that I've been very privileged to experience. Um, but I really do appreciate you taking the time, folks. Um, I'm looking forward to my next trip. I know each and every one of you are. In the meantime, for more information, to speak with an expert consultant and our team is, would love to help you. They get out on these trips every single year. So you're talking to people with firsthand experience of exactly what you're talking about. Uh, please give us a call. 1-800-268-7252 will connect you to a consultant. They'll be happy to walk through your questions, anything you'd like to know and help you line up that perfect dream vacation. Uh, if you want to see more of that selection I've been talking about, definitely visit www.amtrackvacations.com to learn more. And if you have a travel agent you've been working with and enjoy working with, definitely contact your travel advisor. They will get in touch with us and help coordinate that trip with our team. 
So folks, thank you. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you for sharing. I see your dream vacations popping up. I really do love to see that. And I have to say, I feel like I have inspired a few of you. So I hope, hope you've enjoyed our discussion today. Um, definitely we'll be following up to answer all your questions. Have a great day, folks. Have a great year and we'll see you out there on the rails.